to leave us in prayer. Let's just all stand. God, I will give you all your dignity and unity of purpose. Because I am your Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your blessings. We pray for God that you will take the control of this city. In the burden and matters of national corruption. Father, we just thank you on your presence. We pray. Amen. Amen. Why our party 
the side to withdraw its participation from the polls. In that regard, we call upon the election observers coming in from the Commonwealth Secretariat and the Organization of American States to take careful note of the vexing circumstances under which these snap elections are being conducted. An election process that is so deeply flawed and weighted in favor of the ruling party should never be considered as being either free or fair. Based on the current threat to our democracy, the United Workers' Party again calls on His Excellency the President to exercise his executive authority granted under Article 58 of our country's constitution, suspend his election writ, and postpone the holding of elections until such time that the electoral reform process is complete. Furthermore, we call upon the regional governments and the international community to denounce the holding of this election and also not to recognize whichever government that emerges out of this process. At this point, let me assure the people of Dominica that the United Workers' Party is doing everything within its legal and constitutional rights to ensure that electoral reforms are completed. Another important matter that we wish to draw to the attention of the public is the fact that no less than eight members of the United Workers' Party have since 2017 been brought before the courts by this government on various charges, including incitement and treason at tremendous financial and other costs to the Dominican public. These members are trustee and founding member, and founding member as well as the former Prime Minister of Dominica, Mr. Harrison James, the leader of the opposition, Honorable Emerson Linton, Honorable Hector John, the former the MP for the Salisbury constituency, Honorable Danny Luque, the MP for the Rose North constituency, Mr. Nicholas George, our General Secretary, Dr. Sam Christian, who contested in the Sufia constituency in 2019, Mr. Brian Linton, and myself, Dr. Thompson Fontaine, the political leader of the United Workers' Party. We view these charges as being largely frivolous and meant to either intimidate or stifle the legitimate opposition. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister has encouraged his followers to throw hot water on members of the opposition. Minister Rachel Sri has called to, in his words, disappear the opposition, while Labour Party operative Lennox Lawrence has called for the hunting down of the opposition like terrorists. The fact remains that absolutely no action has been taken against those who continue to incite violence against the opposition. I now therefore call on this government and the police authorities to immediately withdraw those bogus charges against all its opposition members and allow us to go about our lives and doing the work of the people of Dominica period. Let me now turn your attention to the areas that our party, following our delegates' conference, will be focused on in the coming weeks. As a priority, we will immediately begin strengthening, renewing, and expanding our party's base. We will explore new ways to assist in the welfare of our residents and supporters, and actively engage with the diaspora as we seek to build and to expand. Finally, the United Workers' Party is calling on all Dominicans to join us in a major rally on Sunday 11 December from 3 p.m. in order for us to hear the party's plans going forward. As we are back on this new era in our political history, let me assure the Dominican public that the United Workers' Party remains committed to good governance, and to promote it and improve the standard of living for our people. We continue to urge the people of Dominica to demand good and accountable government and insist that this current government completes the electoral reform process as quickly as possible. As I close, I wish to note that our party continues to work with the Electoral Reform Coalition, which is comprised of opposition parties, civil society organizations, and the public service union. 
As part of this effort for electoral reforms, we will be engaged in a number of activities to strengthen our demand for such reforms. On Wednesday, there will be a town hall meeting at the PSU building. Saturday, a drive through on the West Coast. Sunday will be a call for national prayer across Dominica. And on Monday, there will be a massive public meeting and candlelight vigil in Roseau. We solicit your support as we commit ourselves to nation building and the restoration of our democracy. Thank you. Okay, the, the meeting with Sir Dennis Byron was to discuss the draft legislation that, uh, that is being proposed. Uh, so we had a very useful discussion around that. I can't go into details specifically of what was discussed. But just to let you know that Sir Byron continues with his work and that he, he will be presenting at the end of this month the final draft report to both us and the government. What is the way forward? Because you've been talking about um, possible court action, which seems to be almost a no You call on the president to suspend his writ. We are just a few days away from the general election. What is the way forward? I, I heard you call, spoke about various meetings, etc., etc. What do you see the way forward now? The way forward is to continue as we've done because we believe that there is a role for the President of Dominica to play. And they said under Article 58, as the executive um, authority in this country, he has the right to suspend the elections. He can do so based on a number of reasons that we have cited why this election should not go forward. Uh, so we continue to do that. We continue to urge the President to act. There is still time for him to do so, and we hope that he will do it. In the meantime, Ours is one of pressing for electoral reform. And we are prepared to continue this fight beyond December 6th. As we've, as we've indicated before, we're not going to rest. We're not going to stop until such time as we receive electoral reform. This is our number one priority going forward, and we want to pursue it until this government gives us the reform that the country has been asking for. Some say, Dr. Fountain, that uh, the decision by the United Workers Party not to contest the general election uh, is a wrong one, irrespective of the issue of electoral reform. Some feel that that was the opportunity for you to stamp the authority. How do you address people who think that way? Well, I will just point them to the elections of 2019, the elections of 2014, the elections of 2009. It is clear that there is not an even play there. Okay, and we know it because the least that we have, 75,000 persons in a population of 70,000. Also, we have seen the means by which this government has continued to win those elections. Yeah. We continue to maintain that the elections have been stolen. Uh, it has been done for a process of trickery. You have in, uh, persons voting on dead persons' names on the list. You have a situation of persons brought into Dominica. So nothing was going to change in this election. Prime Minister has the exact same plan. Even as I speak to you today, we know a person's been recruited to come down, even if he's competing against himself. Persons have been recruited to come down to vote. So, contesting an election, knowing that everything is stacked against you, is not the right way to go. We believe that by taking this stand, we will bring the glare of the region. International attention will be brought to be on what's going on in Dominica. People will understand that we do not have a working democracy in Dominica. And that is the best way of ensuring and pushing pressure. In a few days, we'll have the observers from the Commonwealth. We'll have the observers from the OAS. We'll have the rest of the world focus on Dominica. 
And now is the time to make that statement because they will understand that the United Workers Party, the largest opposition party, is not taking part in those sham elections. And that's what it is. These elections are sham. Make no mistake about it. And for us to participate in an election that we know we're not going to win, and, and, and don't let the people fool you. The Prime Minister has done that three, four times. He knows exactly what he's doing. He looks at the constituencies where he thinks he may lose, and he simply brings people into those constituencies. All right, so with a clean voters list, with electoral reforms, with voting, with ID cards, all of that will be thing of the past. And it's only when those things are in place, this United Workers Party will then take part in any elections. The election of the observers are here. Yes, I, I want to address your question. Yes. Do you mind, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The Prime Minister Dominica challenged me as leader of the opposition to sign an agreement with him that we would accept the recommendations of Sedesma. The Prime Minister stood before the nation of Dominica, in the presence of the entire international community on the 3rd of November, 2022, our Independence Day, and lied to the people of Dominica and the world by saying that he was looking forward to receiving and implementing the recommendations of the Sedanus Byron Consultancy on Electoral Reform. A few days later, at a time when he knew he knew, he knew that Sir Dennis Byron was ready with his draft recommendations on a new registration of electors bill and new regulations for that act. As he is one of his reports and has submitted a timeline for implementation which would take the new legislation to Parliament in December and have it passed, enacted in January. At the time when Mrs. Mrs. Skerritt knew that Sir Dennis Barron intended to conclude his consultation on the report with the main political parties and civil society organization groups by the end of this month, Mrs. Skerritt called the election. And he did it for one reason, one reason only to avoid going into an election with electoral reform, with a new process that was fit for the purpose of free and fair elections in the Commonwealth of Dominica, which we were admonished not to have with the process that we used in 2019. The Caribbean Court of Justice, sir, admonished us in light of its observations that there were great concerns with how the process of the 2019 elections were conducted. Future elections in Dominica ought not to be held with these or similar things. But remember that's an opinion eh, from the Caribbean Court of Justice and it's not binding. It, it is an opinion of the Caribbean Court of Justice. Yes. And it is supposed to give us guidance. The Caribbean Court of Justice is an apex court. And I'm surprised by the suggestion from you and others that when we see a moment of comment in the uh, report from the cabin, in the judgment of the cabin court of justice, it amounts to nothing more than shooting the breeze. They would not have arrived at those comments if they, would, if they did not feel it was important because elsewhere in the judgment, reference is made to what happens in democracies in the Caribbean where the rule of law is flouted and where the will of the people is not allowed surface. The judgment speaks of riots and revolts in countries where elections don't go as the people expect them to go. And all we have been fighting for in Dominica over the last 15 to 20 years is a process for elections in Dominica that is free, that is fair, and that gives us the result of the popular will of the people by majority vote. We have government of the people by the people for the people. So when we talk now about the way forward, 
the way forward, as Dr. Fountain indicated, is about keeping the focus on the sham elections and ensuring that the rest of the world understands that this is an illegitimate government. The elections will not do before April, May of 2025, which means we were two and a half months out. Let me and we got, no, you, you're going to tell me that the Prime Minister has the prerogative of all election at any time? As always. Yes. So, 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 yes, say but that. the Prime Minister has the, the prerogative or the discretion of the Constitution of calling the election at any time. But he's calling an election that he is not given the constitutional responsibility to conduct. The constitutional responsibility to conduct the election belongs to the Electoral Commission. And what has happened in this case, where the Constitution, the framers, obviously felt that there needed to be some connection, some communication, some congruence between the Prime Minister and the Electoral Commission on the important matter of elections, the Prime Minister goes off on his own and calls an election which he knows which he knows the Electoral Commission is not ready to conduct. And he knows that simply because the Electoral Commission has a commitment that he had to impose by spending $650,000 of the people's money on the reform consultancy, which was supposed to advise us on how we proceed. And it's important that that be understood. Because every time I hear this question about, oh, the Prime Minister has the discretion under the Constitution to call elections at any time. I almost feel that we would have no problem if sometime in February next year he decides he's calling an election again. And then he has the election and then later on in the year he calls another one. He just calls the election because he has the, the privilege of Why did he call it? He called it because he said he wants a reset. A reset of what? Hasn't he ever heard about a cabinet reshuffle? What, 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 are we, what are we doing in Dominica? What are we into, really? So, so, let us bring calm heads to this debate and this discussion on what the national interest is. And Mrs. Skerritt, in my view, is guilty of fraudulent misrepresentation in calling this election and forcing the, the Electoral Commission into an election for which it was not prepared or it is not prepared, having given people the commitment that at least going into the next election, the voters register will be cleaned and there will be ID cards for voting. There are a number of other elements of the reform which have been taken on board. And Dr. Thompson Fondin confirmed to you that we did meet with Sir Dennis Byron yesterday afternoon and discussed over three hours the proposals for changes to the registration of electors. And we are satisfied with a couple exceptions that the legislation is ready to go to Parliament. We've discussed our concerns with the consultant and we expect that those concerns will be addressed in the final report that we have been assured will be delivered to the people of Dominica before the end of month. Thank you. I yeah, was going to also say that the election observers that the um, Commonwealth that I met one of them earlier today, when you intend to meet with them, what sort of information do you intend to bring forth to them or concerns that you intend to bring forth with them to them? The concerns are the same concerns that we have been pushing forward, which is that the playing field for elections is not level. Uh, we'll bring the issue of the floating voters list. We'll bring the issue of the way the past elections have been won. We'll bring them, we'll show them their own reports. We'll remind them in their own reports what they've said in the past about those elections. And we'll ask them not to recognize these elections as being free or fair. And also, um, you know, we'll be doing bringing all of that because I think it's very important that they understand that what is happening on the not democracy, and that we can say that's all. There's a question for somebody on the TV from Petra Carbon Online. She says here, apart from electoral reform, what other issues 
where the United Workers Party will focus on. The main thing, in addition to electoral reform, is the question of the economy. Okay? How do we um, regain this economy? How do we revive this economy? How do we get back to that place that we used to be? Uh, because you, you will agree with me that um, our economy is in free fall. Uh, the people of Dominica um, are suffering and suffering badly as a result of the mismanagement of this, either mismanagement or non-management of this economy. And so we will be looking, as I said in my statement, we will be looking at the welfare of our members. Uh, because we know that our members have been discriminated against. The children have been denied scholarships, the children have been denied opportunities of work. So we as a party, we have to see how we can address that within our means, within the opposition. But it's something that we will continue to pursue because we believe that it's very important that the standard of living in Dominica be improved and that we do our best to uplift the people of Dominica. One of the recommendations, one of the recommendations that um, Dr. Irvin Pasco is putting forward is that the, the electorate in Dominica, they should step out and go to the ballot and either put an X on the paper or write no reform, no election. And he says that way it will send a message to the observers who are here that the only concern not legitimizing the election. Is that an approach that the United Workers Party, is that something that you will adopt? Is that something you would urge your followers to do? We have been very clear that we will not participate in the election. And that continues to be the message for our members do not participate at all in the elections. Dr. Martin, in the coming days, um, you announced several um, activities which the United Workers Party will host it for as it pertains to the upcoming election. Do you believe that um, this will have any effect on the rest of the Dominican public? Um, we are indecisive. We are really looking towards an independent candidate to their community. The town hall meetings, the um, vigil, Yes, these are activities that are being done under the umbrella of the Electoral Reform Coalition, which does not only include the United Workers Party, but includes the other opposition parties, uh, civil society organizations like NJAM, the Public Service Union. And what we're trying to do is to get people out. You know, one of the things that we want to register is that a vast majority of Dominicans are not in favor of these town elections. So we want them to come to express themselves in different ways. And those activities that you mentioned, these are opportunities for Dominicans to step out and say, we do not support those elections. We demand electoral reform. And that is what we want to be focused on. And that is what we will be to achieve through those various activities. And on Sunday, we'll be praying to God. I think that's a very good thing that the people yes, of Dominica can do. In red color. Um, <laughs> we can be, we will be praying to God, all of Dominica, to really put their hand and to really integrate now with their state of Dominica. Where will this vigil take place? Is it at home here? Is it the state of the country? No. Yes, on Sunday. On Sunday, they will stay at home at the place of worship. Um, they will ask them to go to the churches to pray. There will be activities on the radio. Uh, but the, the candlelight vigil and rally is on Monday, and that will be from around 6 o'clock, it will ask to come up in the thousands to Roseau and to share a very strong message. And everybody who comes will be representing that they are against the holding of those sham elections. Dr. Fontaine, you've been, not only you, but Mr. Linton, many times you'll call people out, and I just heard you say you're calling them out in the thousands. The people seem non chillant about that, just the usual few. How are you going to convince the people this time around that they need to come out and send the message? How are you going to convince them? Well, Kalai, two thousands ago, that was not the usual few. Thousands, you saw the thousands that were there. Uh, thousands and thousands of people came out. And I think it's a different era, I think it's a different time. People are sufficiently fed up with this administration. And uh, Mark, you, these are people, I mean, I'm sure you saw it. These were public servants, these were teachers, these were nurses. These were people saying, I am at rich stage, we are fed up, I'm prepared to step out. Let them do what they have to do, but we are taking our stand. 
And I think that's where Dominicans are now. They're saying enough is enough. They're fed up of this government. They're fed up of this government doing as it wishes. I mean, why should the Prime Minister continue to behave as if Dominica belongs to him? There are thousands of Dominicans who are pleased with the way this country has been run. And I thank God they are prepared to take a stand. And we will be leading that charge. The United Workers Party, as the main opposition party, will be leading the charge, calling on all Dominicans to step out. Fear no more. I wonder whether Kyle will be noticing the usual few following the campaign events of the Game of Party. You noticing that as well? I don't go to the stage. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, didn't, I, I, I thought that as a media person, you know, covered all the events and stuff. I think that. I think yeah, that. I'll ask a question because after all, um, are you guys planning at all to resuscitate the coconut industry in Dominica? Oh, absolutely. Uh, because the history of coconut is, has been very important, <laughs> and I think Mr. Linton can comment on this because he worked for DCP for a, a period of time. We had the Dominica yeah. coconut products, yeah. which was a key yeah. pillar of our economy. Yeah. Right? And put all I get into that. <laughs> um, so I'd like if you guys could make comment on resuscitating the coconut industry and make it again a pillar of our economy. And if you could comment on the jelly question, I don't appreciate it. <laughs> oh, no, you know, it is deeply hurtful to me and offensive to me as a, a son of farmers, as a man who actually worked the soil. It is deeply offensive when a Prime Minister of Dominica, a Prime Minister of Dominica, can thumb his nose at a hard working farmer. <laughs> I think every Dominican should be master. You know, this country was built not on the back of people receiving handouts. This country was built on the blood and the sweat of the fires of the world. So it, that was the most hurtful and disturbing statement, which, which shows the Prime Minister has clearly out of control as well. Uh, because to, you know, to, to be so condescending to a man who is doing, you know, he's working hard. He's not coming begging the Prime Minister. He's working to take care of his, of his family, and you are crying down. The Prime Minister should be lifting people up. It reminds me of the same derogatory thing that they have to say about me when I try to bring money into the constituencies of Rivia Siri and Grand Ponson by going to the farm. I was called an officer, dirty officer, you know? But it's a, it's a label I gladly accepted because you cannot look down on hard work. And our plan to resuscitate the agriculture sector is one of the key priorities in bringing back the economy. And that will involve bananas, it will involve coconuts, it will involve tree crops, it will involve essential oils. All of the elements we are going to bring together again to make sure that we can boost agriculture and provide opportunities. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Mr. Masler, a lot of persons viewing and listening, they likely to see you at the head table. And just to succinct some of the questions to you directly, they're asking what will be your role in this new leadership team, especially as it pertains to the young people in particular? Well, good morning again um, to everyone. Uh, thanks for your question, Lofty. Well, uh, people's question. All right, but you read it, so <laughs> you yeah. chose which one that you, you want yeah. to point to me. Um, my role is to really support the, the team to work alongside with Dr. Thompson Fountain and every other Dominican in asking for better for our people and the advancement of our nation. The youth is one area which most people would affiliate with me because of maybe my, my age or uh, the particular way I carry about myself. But the overall interest is of every sector of Dominica. We can't forget the elderly, we can't forget those who are middle age and who have been victimized and ostracized by this well regime and we need to continue to inspire and motivate others that we all are inspired together and the overall effort is for the betterment and advancement of our nation. So I, I will ensure that this continues and we look forward into representing the interests of each and every Dominican. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
No more questions. I have a question. <laughs> Which to this market? He said that there is somebody there, but I'm trying to figure out who. We want to thank you, the members of the media and press, who are here for gracing us with your time. And we're hoping that you will carry the news that come that came out from this press conference. We will broadcast it far and wide, irrespective of uh, the opinion of one of your members. And that's why we have the press conference, so that we can entertain the views of everybody. Everybody. So, we thank you, and we wish you Godspeed. came out and support and being part of this uh, UWP press, press conference. Just want to thank each and everyone for coming and support. Also supporting the Evans team. Just want to give much gratitude towards everyone who's been supporting and the Evans team really do appreciate that support. Once again this broadcast is live broadcast as brought to you by Evans News and the Evans team is out. <laughs>